So today we'll be looking back at Pep Guardiola's time with Bayern Munich. I've been wondering for quite a while whether Pep Guardiola was successful during his time in Germany, so I decided to make this video. This is actually the first video in a series in which I'll be looking at how certain managers with mixed opinions did during their time with a specific club. To answer that question for Guardiola, I'll be looking at how well he did to live up to the standards of the average Bayern Munich manager and how well he prepared the club for the future. The first question asks whether he achieved his primary objective at the club. So what exactly was his primary objective? I would say his primary objective was to raise the standard of football at Bayern Munich and maintain the standard of silver at the club, with maybe one or a few Champions League trophies sprinkled in between. But most importantly, to bring Tiki Taka to Bayern Munich and deliver trophies with complete dominance and the style that Guardiola's Barcelona were known for. With that framework established, let's examine the facts. In three seasons he spent at the club, Guardiola was in charge of 161 games. Out of those 161 games, he won 124 at a win rate of 77%, which is about expected of a Bayern manager recently, considering Jupp Pinks before him had a win percentage of roughly 78%, and Carlo Ancelotti after had a win rate of roughly 72%. Now that the raw statistics are out of the way, we can dig a little deeper beneath the surface. Bayern Munich under Pep Guardiola were arguably the most feared team in Europe and practically the favourites for the Champions League every year despite not even reaching the final once. The reason for that prestige was that Guardiola not only implemented Tiki Taka but he repurposed and reinterpreted it for a side that had two skillful wingers, a traditional number 9 and did not have a midfield containing Xavi and Iniesta. Pep raised the game of each and every one of his players so much so that he would on occasion let the players decide how they wanted to approach the game. To illustrate just how incredible Bayern Munich were under Pep Guardiola, let me just list a number of his achievements at the club. He led Bayern to the earliest ever league title in Bundesliga history. He got the joint most number of wins in a Bundesliga season. He led the club to 19 consecutive Bundesliga wins, another record. He became the first foreigner to win the Bundesliga three times and he's actually the only manager ever to win the title in his first three seasons in Germany. I could just go on at this point to be quite honest. It goes without saying that as far as domestic accomplishments go, Guardiola went above and beyond expectation. The problem though is that Guardiola never seemed to taste the same level of success in Europe that he did in Germany. Despite implementing his unique brand of football on his Bayern side, Guardiola didn't manage to give the club that extra push that it needed to win the Champions League. In three seasons, three semi-final exits. Each elimination had its own unique narrative, whether it was poor tactics, injuries, luck, or really just a combination of those factors. Regardless of the reasons behind the failure to win the Champions League, the fact that Pep was unable to deliver a number 6 for Bayern left his legacy missing a vital piece. The other question about Guardiola's time at Bayern asks whether he set the club up well for the future. This is actually a bit difficult to truly gauge for two reasons. Firstly, he wasn't at the club for very long, only three years, and he didn't have that much control over transfers at the club. Nonetheless, we can still look at what he did actually do with what he had at his disposal during his three years at the club. When he arrived at the club, this was basically his go-to lineup, with Götze occasionally playing as a false nine and Lam sometimes moving up into midfield and being replaced by Rafinha at right back. Over the years though, the team saw a few changes like Lewandowski taking the number 9 position and Xabi Alonso joining the midfield after Toni Kroos left. Overall, the players Bayern acquired during Guardiola's time in charge were generally in their prime, approaching it, or exciting prospects. On the other hand, the majority of the first team players Bayern let go during that time were either in their late 20s or 30s at the time of departure. These are all the first team players Bayern signed during Pep's three years and their average age. Here are the players that left the club. As you can see, there's quite a discrepancy between the two groups and while Guardiola can take all the credit for the squad recycling, you have to give him credit for maintaining standards despite getting rid of experienced players. And more importantly, you need to give him credit for the development of certain players who you'd expect to spend the next 10 or so years at the club. Firstly, he took a very raw player in Kingsley Common and brought him to a level at which he started challenging Frank Ribery for that left wing spot. Secondly, he made Thiago Alcantara one of the best midfielders in Europe. 
Thiago was already considered one of the biggest upcoming talents in Europe when he decided to leave Barcelona but Guardiola slowly eased him into that chaffy position and made him irreplaceable for Bayern's midfield. Lastly, in his final season at the club, he transformed new signing Joshua Kimmich from a holding midfielder into one of the best fullbacks in the world. This was in spite of being played at centre back and in midfield occasionally. Guardiola managed to instill all that versatility and initiative in Kimmich within the space of a season and I think he's the player you should think of when attempting to answer the question of whether Pep Guardiola prepared the club for the future. In conclusion, I think it's fair to say that Guardiola was phenomenal with Bayern. If not for the blemish of failing to win the Champions League, I'm sure this would be the general consensus. There are of course some people who think his achievements in the Bundesliga are unimpressive but it's undeniable that he made that team almost perfect and did a good job of setting the team up well for prolonged success. The final verdict for me is that Guardiola at Bayern was indeed a success.